Welcome. Today, I'm going to show you how you can easily communicate between scenes in a Phaser 3 game by using custom events. So previously, we created a very basic uh, Zelda-like health bar in Phaser 3. And this basic health bar was just a, some, a couple of game objects in the scene. And we went ahead and played animations based on if it was clicked or not. So typically, as your games get more complex, you'll want to decouple things like your UI from your actual core game logic and things like your health components because you might want to do different things. Uh, a good example is in some games, like when you lose health, sometimes you'll play an animation on your player character where they're, uh, they take damage and maybe they're v invulnerable for a bit, but also you would have a health bar that updates. Maybe you'll play a sound effect because uh, you took damage and uh, various things like this. And placing all of that together in one scene can start making your code very complex if you have a very large game. Uh, so one way to decouple the two things is you can use things like events. And with those events, we can now have our logic living in multiple spots. So as an example here, we now have a phaser game that has multiple scenes. So in one scene is our UI scene. This just has a visual representation of our heart. Uh, so it has our heart game objects and we play animations. But then our main game scene, this is where we get our click events where our player's taking damage and we're emitting events, as we see here, that are being picked up by this UI scene. And so this is a good pattern to easily decouple uh, different components in your code. Um, so if you missed the previous video, uh, there'll be a link on the screen as well in the description down below. Also, there'll be a link to download a starter template that'll have this code base uh, in the description as well. So you can go ahead and download that code if you don't have it. Go ahead and extract it and open it in your ID of choice and we'll get started. All right, so once you have the project open, uh, the first thing we wanna do is install our project dependencies. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that process started. Uh, so I'm just gonna do yarn install. Uh, if you're using the NPM package manager, you can just do NPM install and that will also install the dependencies that we need. So if we go ahead and take a look at our project real quick, um, what we'll see is we're gonna have two HTML files. One will be index.html file. So this is the main file that has the original example for the health bar. And then we'll have this interscene communication HTML file, which will link to a different uh, folder uh, with a main TS file. And this is where we're going to be having our logic for having our multi scene game where we'll be communicating with events. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use yarn start to start our local dev server. I've used an npm, you can do npm run start, and that will also uh, start the dev server, and it should be on port 3000. Um, and you can go ahead and open up that in your browser. All right, so if you go to your browser, if you go to localhost 3001 tab, you'll see our basic health bar example. And if you also open localhost 3000, enter scene communication.html, this will be other HTML file. And from the code point of view, they're both doing the same thing right now. So we open up main.ts, we'll see we have our basic example as well as the main TS in the root, um, the exact same code. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our main TS for interesting communication. And this is where we we'll start adding in our logic. All right, so a quick review of what we have so far. We have a basic fa phaser game configuration down at the bottom of a file. We have one phaser scene uh, called game. And in here in our preload method, we load in our sprite sheet that we're using for our game. We create a few animations for losing health. And then what we're doing is we're listening for click events on our scene. And when this click event happens, we're updating a health variable that we have. And then we're playing animations based on what that value is. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna break our game up into two different scenes. We'll have a game scene uh, where we'll interact with it and a UI scene where we'll just have our hearts, our health bar show on the screen. So to do this, we'll go into our inter scene communication folder. We'll add a new subfolder called scenes. Inside here, we'll create two files. We'll have ui.ts, and then we'll have a game.ts. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy our game class from our main.ts file over to our ui.ts and our game.ts. We'll copy our import statement. So we'll place this at the top of our ui class and our game class. Then what we'll do is we're gonna copy our asset keys 
our animations and our assets and paste them into our UI.ts file. So then we're going to rename our class to UI. We'll rename our scene key to UI and we're going to export that out. We'll do export default. Then over here, we'll also do export default. So we'll go ahead and save files. Go we'll ahead and remove that from here and go ahead and save. So then what we're going to want to do is in our game.ts, we won't need to load in our assets or create our animations or anything like that. So we can clean up that code. The only thing we're going to want is our input handler. And this is where we'll be updating our, our health for our player and taking damage. So I'm just going to add a console log and we'll do game scene clicked. Then all of the code above that, we're going to go ahead and rip out. Go ahead and save. We're going to come back to our UI class. And we're just going to leave this class as is, um, just to make sure everything's working properly. And then what we'll do is we actually need to add these two scenes to our game configuration. So if we just try to reference them, we can have our IntelliSense import them for us. So we're going to import our game scene and pass that to our scene configuration. And we'll do the same with our UI scene. And we'll go ahead and save. So the only other thing we need to do is when our game first starts, if we don't provide a scene, it's going to use the first one in our scene array. So our game scene, so our game scene starts, but we don't have anything showing, so it doesn't look like anything's working. So we actually need to start our UI scene. So we could do that in the create method of our game scene. The other option is in our configuration, we can pass in a property called active and we'll set this to true. And what this will do is when phaser starts up the uh, scenes, if active is set to true by default, it will start that scene automatically. Um, so by default, this value will be false and it won't do that. So now it looks like our game is working properly, but if we go ahead and take a look at our console, we'll see that our game scene click event is working properly. And we know that our UI one is working properly since our health is updating uh, appropriately. So now that we broke our game into multiple scenes, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a health component. And this health component will be the object that lives in both scenes and we'll be referencing it. So to do that, we're just going to create a new class. So in our inter scene communication folder, we're going to add a new folder. We're going to call this components. Inside here, we're just going to add a file called health.ts and we're going to go ahead and create a basic class. So we're just going to do class. We're going to call this health. And we're going to add two properties. Um, we're going to have a current health. So this is going to reflect what the player's current health is. We'll make this a number. And then we're also going to do max health. So this is the starting value of their health and like what they could heal up to. And then we'll go ahead and add in our constructor. So in our constructor, we're just going to initialize our values. We'll do this.currenthealth will be equal to this dot max health. And we'll also do this dot max health. Make sure we set that first and we'll set it equal to six for now. So then we're going to need a way to get these values. So we're just going to add two getters. Uh, so we'll do get max health. This is going to return a number. So we're going to do return this dot max health. And we're going to do the same thing for our current health. So we're just going to copy this block of code and we're just going to change this to current health. And we're going to return current health. All right. So now that we have the uh, basic structure for our class, we just need a way for the player to lose health. So we're going to add a new public method to public lose health. And we won't take any arguments. And we're just going to return void, so we're not going to return anything. And so we'll do if this dot current health is equal to zero, we can't lose any more health, so we're just going to return early. 
Then what we'll do is we're just going to update our health. So we'll do this dot current health minus equals one. So then finally, we're just going to export out an instance of our class. We'll do export const health will be equal to new health. And then what we're going to want to do is reference this component in our classes. So if we come to our game scene, what we're going to do is we'll get remove our console log and we're just going to do health. So we're going to import our health component and we'll do lose health. So this would simulate that the player is taking damage. Then back in our UI scene, we need to remove our health instance from here. So our local variable and reference our new health component. So we're just going to get rid of this variable here. Then we just need to import. So we'll let the IntelliSense import that for us. So we'll do health dot our max health. Uh, so our total number of hearts will be based on our uh, max health for our health component. Then what we'll do is if our health dot current health is equal to zero, we're going to return early. Actually, we can go ahead and remove this because in our health component, we're checking if we're set to zero um, and we're returning there. So we won't need that check. Um, but here we do need to get our current health. All right. So then we'll go ahead and get our current health. And then we don't need to modify our health here. All right. So if we go ahead and save. Let's take a look at our scene. And so it looks like with our new health component, everything is still uh, functioning um, until we run out of health. Then we run into an issue. So now that we have our health component hooked in, the next thing we need to do is we want to go ahead and switch to using events to emit when things happen. So instead of having a click event both in our game scene and in our UI scene, what would be more preferable is when we lose health in our health component, we would emit an event that other clients can listen to and then react accordingly. So when we lose our health, we admit an event that would say, hey, I've lost health. Here's my new health value. And then in our UI, we can listen to that and then react. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the phaser uh, events emitter object. And this will allow us to have our own custom emitter. Uh, so then that way we can emit on our own events without interfering with our phaser game. So in our components folder, I'm just going to make a new file and I'm going to call this events.ts. So in here, we're just going to export out const a custom emitter. I'm going to set that equal to a new phaser events dot event emitter. So then what we'll do is let's come back to our health component. After we update our health, what we're going to do is we're going to emit this custom event. So we're going to do our custom emitter. So we'll go ahead and import that. We'll do emit. Then when we emit our event, we need to provide a name for our event. So I'm just going to call this lose health. Then we can provide any additional arguments that we want to be passed to any function that's listening for this event. So what I'm going to pass is I'm going to pass the current health and the previous health value. So then that way we can update our UI based on these values. So for our current health, let's do this dot current health. And then for our previous value, we'll just add one to it uh, since that's all we subtracted. And then what we're going to do is we'll come to our UI class and we're going to remove this uh, pointer down listener. So I'm just going to add a few lines of code. We're going to want to go ahead and reference our custom emitter. And then we're going to use the on method to register an event listener uh, for a given event. So we want to want to use the same event name that we have here. So that way we can listen for that event. Um, and because we're using this in more than one spot, we're going to go ahead and just create a variable to hold that value. So I'm just going to create a new uh, const. We're just going to call this health events. We're going to set that equal to an object. We'll do lose health. And we're just going to set that equal to lose health for the string. And we'll as const. 
So then what we'll do is back in our health component, we're just gonna reference that new uh, variable. So we need to import it and then lose health, come back to our UI, we're gonna do health events and lose health. And then in here will be our callback function. So in our function, we're gonna receive both our current health. So we'll have health and we're gonna have our previous health values. And now we can run custom logic um, in this callback here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do console.log and we're just gonna do event received. And then we'll log our values. So we'll have our health and our previous health. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment this code out here, go ahead and save, and let's just test our changes and make sure everything's working properly. So I've come over to our game, go ahead and click, and we'll see now when we're clicking, we're receiving our event and we're getting our current health value and our previous health value. So now that we have our event working, we just need to connect our uh, previous logic to this new uh, event handler. So then what I'm going to do is going to uncomment out this code and I'm just going to copy this block here. We're going to place this inside our new event handler. And instead of referencing our health component directly, uh, we're just going to go ahead and take our previous health value. We'll divide that by two. And then for our half health, we'll also reference our previous health. And then what we'll do is we're just going to get rid of this whole event listener down here. And we'll go ahead and save. Oh, and so real quick, what we're going to do is we're just going to change our health variable name here. Uh, so in our higher, uh, when we import our health component, it has the same variable name. Uh, so to avoid collisions, we're just going to do new health here in our console log. All right, so now if we save and we come back to our game, let's go ahead and take a look. So if we click, we'll see we're still getting our events and we're playing our animations as we're taking damage. Perfect, and that error we had before is now gone. All right, so just to recap, what we did here is we took our basic health bar example and we started breaking this down into uh, separate components. So then we start making our game more modular. And we did this by using a custom event emitter to go ahead and emit events to communicate between our phaser scenes as well as the components in our game. Uh, so this is a really powerful pattern for when you want to decouple parts of your application without having to introduce that tight coupling. Uh, so before, like when we had our health component having to live inside our UI, but we also would need to reference it later if we had a player game object, or if we wanted to play sound effects, it would make our code very messy because we'd have to have a way to access this in multiple locations and react when things happen. And events are a great way to simplify this. Uh, so I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, as a reminder, in the description of the video will be a link to the completed source code as well as a live demo of this. Um, if you're interested in more great Phaser 3 content, please go ahead and check out some of the links that will be on your screen now.